Friends, welcome back to Goro Tutorials. This is the second video on lecture series photosynthesis. In this particular video of photosynthesis, we would discuss about where does the process of photosynthesis actually takes place and the answer to all of us is very obvious the green parts which is leaf and the herbaceous stem. In this video, we would discuss about leaf. Leaf basically has three parts epidermis, vascular bundles and mesophyll. The outermost covering of the leaf is referred to as epidermis. The upper part is referred to as adaxial epidermis. Whereas the lower part is referred to as abaxial epidermis. The adaxial epidermis would have a thick layer of cuticle with small amount of stomata out there. Whereas the abaxial would have thin layer of cuticle with large number of stomata. The central part of the leaf is occupied by a vascular bundle when you cut down a vein. The vascular bundles you see are covered by bundle sheath which has in it xylem. Xylem is responsible for transport of water and minerals and phloem which is responsible for transport of food. In leaves, photosynthesis occurs particularly in the specialized cells which are referred to as mesophyll cells. They contain chloroplasts and are actually the site of photosynthesis. Now, these mesophyll cells are of two types. The one towards the adaxial are arranged compactly which are parallel to one another and the one towards the abaxial axis are having a lot of intercellular spaces between them and are arranged very irregularly. So we'll find there are two different types of mesophyll cells. The one towards the adaxial is referred to as palisade parenchyma and the one towards the abaxial is referred to as spongy parenchyma. So kids, I hope you would be understanding the video. Let us now try to get into the structure of the plant cell. A plant cell would typically have in it a cell wall, a cell membrane, a large vacuole whose membrane would be referred to as tonoplast, a nucleus, a mitochondria, the powerhouse of cell. There will be nucleus and chromatin dispersed in the nucleus an endoplasmic reticulum, Golgi apparatus and finally the structure of our interest which is chloroplast. So basically a chloroplast is a green colored plastid. The entire process of photosynthesis is completed in the chloroplast itself. Talking about the structure of the chloroplast, chloroplast is a double membrane bound organelle. So if at all we observe the structure of the chloroplast, we would find there will be an outer membrane there will be an inner membrane and an intermembrane space between the two. The number of organized flattened membranous sacs which are called as thylakoids are present in the stroma. These thylakoids are arranged in a stacks like pile of coins. Now they are going to be referred to as grana. These granas are interconnected and they are also connected to the inner wall of the chloroplast. So you got a thylakoid, the empty space which is called as stroma and then you have the stromal lamella. Now, thylakoid is basically the place where the light would be absorbed which would result into the photolysis or the breakdown of water or you can call it as splitting of water. Now the splitting of water would release oxygen and ultimately drive the synthesis of ATP and NADPH2. Since this process is dependent on light, it is also called as light reaction. So the light reaction would take place in the thylakoid. Stroma would use the ATP and NADP from thylakoid and reduce carbon dioxide to carbohydrate. And since this process being independent of light, this reaction are called as dark reaction. So that is it kids. I hope you would have understood the video. If that's the case, please hit the like button. You can share the video with your friend and also subscribe to my channel. May God bless you and thank you very much.